Hi, my name is Rudra Kush and welcome to my home studio. So today I'm going to show you all the gear that I use and how it is integrated in my workflow. As a producer, I always wanted a dedicated space for myself and I am fortunate enough to have my own dedicated space now, but it all started with a low budget computer and a broken table that I had. I used that setup for many years and then finally I decided to take a step further and I bought myself my first pair of headphones and a MIDI keyboard. So this is the keyboard that I bought. Uh, this is the uh, Akai MPK Mini. So this has, you know, some pads, some knobs and this jock wheel. And this has, you know, enough keys to get started. And I was, you know, super excited when I got this one. Uh, I still have it, it still works, it's still sitting in my studio and I will always keep it with myself because it really holds a special place in my heart. After that, um, I started taking things more seriously and I bought myself my first audio interface. So this was the audio interface that I was using. Uh, this is the Focusrite um, 2i2. So this has, you know, two channels and volume knobs and preamps, headphones, and you can connect a pair of studio monitors with them. So yeah, this is what I was using as my first audio interface. And this thing is, you know, built as a tank, I would say. This works till date and I bought it, I think almost a decade ago. So this still works and uh, holds up special place in my heart. So yeah, this was my first ever audio interface. So fast forward today, here we are. I have bunch more gear. And in this video, I'm gonna go through each and every piece of equipment I have in my home studio. So I want to start with the heart of my setup, which is my computer. And this is the Apple MacBook M1 Pro. So it has 16 GB of RAM and one terabyte of hard drive. I was using Windows for a very long time, but then I switched to a Mac. So currently I'm using my television as my second monitor and it is connected by HDMI. So this MacBook was $3,600 and the television was $250. Next is the brain of my setup, which is my audio interface. So I am using this Scarlett 18 i20. So all the equipment is connected to my audio interface. So this is from Focusrite. There is two headphone jacks at the front. I can also control the volume of my speakers and I have two inputs at the front and six at the back. And the best part is you can check the levels of all of your inputs right at the front. The levels of each input can be controlled by these knobs. So the price of this interface was $900. Next, I have this microphone from Audio Technica. This is AD2020. I use this microphone to record all of my voiceovers for the YouTube, or I can record an artist if I need to. And this mic was for $153, and this vocal shield, it was for $80. Uh, if you're into vocals, you can use this, and this works great in an untreated room. All right, so let's move on to all of my synthesizers. So as you can see, I have collected a bunch of them. I use them for different purposes in my music and also I like to do live jam. So yeah, and all this equipment is always connected to my Ableton so I can just record them at any time. So I wanna start with these bad boys first. They are from Mook and the sound designing possibilities on these things are insane. So this is Mother 32, a semi-modular analog synthesizer. I like to use it for bass and sometimes for lead and believe me it sounds amazing and the best thing is this keyboard which you can use to trigger notes and if you want to take things to the next level you can use this patch bay to unlock a whole new world currently it is set up to receive midi from my interface meaning i can use my midi to record this into my session so the price for this is 1015 dollars 
Above that, we have DFAM, drummer from another mother. This is also a semi-modular analog synthesizer. I use this mainly for percussions and to create groove in my music. This has this 8-step sequencer which I can use to input triggers into this and I can also use this extensive patch bay to modulate sounds in interesting ways or to interact with other modular synthesizers. This is also priced at $1015 and the stand for these two is $98. Next, we have this Behringer Pro 1. I use this for lead sounds and sometimes for pads. As you can see, this has a lot of options to manipulate sound and you can use this patch bay to modulate the sound in interesting ways or to connect it with other synthesizers. There is an arpeggiator and a sequencer built in and this thing is priced at $357. So next we have this little guy. This is Volca Drum Digital Percussion Synthesizer. So as the name suggests, I use it for drums and this has a built-in speaker and you can just use it anywhere. This runs on battery. So this is super fun. I like to create, you know, drum groups with it. And I am also planning to do a sample pack using this. So stay tuned. And this thing is priced at $236. Next, we have this guitar pedal. This is from Zoom MS70 CDR. So this has 86 effects in this. Yes, 86. So this has, you know, stereo capabilities. So you can record it in stereo, which is the best part. So I use it with different synthesizers and this has built in delays, reverbs, phaser, chorus, anything you can think of. And I got this for $215. Next, this beast. This is Syntac from Electron. This is a computer on its own. You do not need anything. Just plug in your headphones and you can use it anywhere. This can create entire songs with arrangements. I got this for $1,525. Next, I have this only polyphonic synthesizer in my entire studio. This has few modes like ARP and chord, etc. And I like this joystick. This is a 360 joystick. I can use to pitch bend or use it as a mod wheel at the same time. This is Korg Minilog XT. I like to create pads with it and this has some effects also, a built-in sequencer. Overall, this is an all-arounder. You can create any sounds using this synthesizer. I got this one for $1,051. Next, we have this MIDI through. This can send MIDI to all the synths, priced at $62. Next, I have two pairs of studio monitors. So the first one is Yamaha. This is HS5 and this sounds amazing. The frequency response starts from 54 Hertz and goes all the way up to 30 kilohertz. And for the pair, I got them for $716. The speakers are standing on these stands and these stands are from Yorkville. They are very durable and I have no issues using them. And of course, you can adjust the height of your speakers using this. So these speaker stands cost me $174. I use this pair for the high end. This has a very nice high end, but it lacks the bass. So for the bass, I have these. These are the PreSonus and they are Bluetooth compatible and they are 4.5 inches. So this has a very good low end. So when I'm mixing the low end or the mid, I prefer using these. And these speakers cost me $329. And they are sitting on these stands. I don't really know how much they cost because it was gifted by one of my friends. I do have a third pair of speaker also. This is just for listening purposes and I use them to DJ and these are from Sound Blaster and have a subwoofer and this cost me around $140. For the headphones, I have always used Audio-Technica. This is ATH MX50. These are the best sounding headphones I have ever used. And I got the white ones because they look sharp. And these were priced at $293. And to store all my samples and files, I use an external hard drive. This is Samsung T7 Shield 1TB. This is a portable SSD and this is super fast. And this is a USB-C, so it plugs directly into my Mac. This hard drive cost me $279. For my MIDI, I have this LSS V49. So this has 49 keys and a bunch of knobs and buttons, which I can link to different parameters in Ableton. I can also use these drum pads and the keys are velocity sensitive. So yeah, that's a good part. And this one was priced at $180. So for the price, it's good. 
Next is this DJ controller. So this is from Pioneer DJ. This is TDJ Flex 4 and this is a two channel DJ controller. This is a very good option if you are starting out in DJing. This has everything you need from effects, beat loops, pads and pretty much everything to get started. So I highly recommend this. So this one was priced at $520. Next, this is my old computer. This is Alienware R17. And I think they are not making this anymore. This is a very old model. This has 16 GB of RAM, one terabyte of hard drive. And this is a very powerful computer. Um, I did use this for five years, I guess. And then along the way, I decided I wanted to switch to a Mac. So I bought my MacBook Pro. This computer I'm only using to DJ because I don't want to move my MacBook every single time to the other table. So I'm using this to basically learn how to DJ. I got this computer for $3,300. For the chair, I use this gaming chair. You can easily find them on Amazon. This one is old, so the cushion is tearing out. And I think I got it for $127. I always get a ton of questions about my desk. Uh, this is a custom built, so the top is an IKEA tabletop. And this is priced at $139. And I got this in oak finish. And this small table is separate, which I bought from Amazon. And this countertop is sitting on these two IKEA. IKEA drawers. They both were for $139 each. Also, I am using these furniture risers to elevate the whole countertop so that I can sit for long hours without hurting my back. So I got eight pieces for $70. This whole setup is more than $700, but I got it from Marketplace for $350, which is a pretty solid deal. I do have two more tables. So this one I got from Amazon for $145 and I have two of them. So they both were $290. Other than that, the cables, the power strip, roughly, they all cost me around $300. All right, I guess that's everything from my studio. I have put some decor items just to create a vibe in the studio because I believe it really helps me to isolate myself and be in my zone. I highly suggest you guys put some effort into the space that you are in. It will really help you to boost that creativity. Also, if you want to check any of the equipment I am using, you can check all the links in the description of this video. If you have any questions about the setup, please leave them in the comments and I will get back to you. All right, so for the grand total, the grand total of my studio is $17,198. One thing I wanna tell you is, in order to make good music, you don't need all this gear, especially in the beginning. You can definitely make good music with just a laptop and a headphones. This setup I have built over time, and this took me around five, six good years, I guess. But your studio is never really finished, I guess. I mean, it will grow with you over time. So keep learning and keep growing. I guess that is it for this video. And once again, all the links are in description. And if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments. So yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace.